Hello, my name is Joel Christ. I'm a developer with Econo Systems, and today I'm going to do a walk through the process of developing a custom application by using Excel Web Services in SharePoint Server 2007. Today I'm going to use Microsoft Visual Studio 2005 to create a simple console application that will allow me to interact with the Excel Services web service. Now I could have also created a Windows form based application or a web application to do the same thing, but for simplicity's sake today I'm going to do it as a console application. So I'm going to come in here and choose to create a new project. We're going to do it in C Sharp and we're going to name our application Excel Services App. Say OK. The next thing I need to do now is add a reference or a web reference to the Excel Services web service. I'm going to come in here, right click on the project name and choose to add a web reference. Now I've already added a reference to this web service in the past as part of my testing so Visual Studio remembers that. So I'm going to come in here and I can pick Excel Service.ASMX. Visual Studio goes out and pulls down the description of the web service for me. That looks good. I'm going to rename it to Excel Web Service for the web reference name and say Add Reference. Visual Studio adds the web reference and generates a proxy class that I can work with to interface with the Excel Services web service. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to replace the Visual Studio generated code with my own and then take a look at what it does. So we have a couple of using statements here to pull in the namespace that was generated for us um, by Visual Studio when we added the web reference for the, uh, the web service reference here, the proxy class. Um, we also pull in the web services protocols namespace as well. Okay, then we come down here and declare some variables to hold the web service URL, target workbook, worksheet, and named range. What this sample application is going to do is it's going to hit the Excel services web service and ask for um, the contents of a named range in a sheet in a workbook. And so we've got some variables here to, to hold those values. Um, those values now are going to come to via the command line, via the command line arguments. And so the first thing the code does is it calls the check args method here, helper function that I've created which all that it does is it checks the number of command line arguments and then parses the command line to break out the individual parameters, displays any errors if there's any problems. There's also a show usage helper function that displays the command line usage of the application. So if the command lines all check out and everything is supplied as, as required, the code then comes down and creates an instance of the Excel web service proxy class here. And then it sets the URL property of that proxy class to the service URL that was passed in on the command line, declares an array of status objects here for um, checking the return of calls to the web service. Of course, a variable to hold the session ID. All of our interaction with the web service is going to be using a session ID here that's given to us when we first create the connection with the web service. And then we declare, or rather, set the credentials on the proxy class here and right now we're using our default credentials. We could have also created our own network credential object specifying a user password and domain name if we wanted to as well. Okay then the code comes down here and starts to try to work with the Excel services web service. So the first thing it does is it does an open workbook call specifying the target workbook string.empty for both the UI data UI and data culture values here to specify that we just want to use the service default settings for the site and user and then we pass in as an out parameter here our array of status objects here and we get back a session ID and we hang on to that because we're going to need to use that down below. So then we come along and we request the range by name specifying true for the formatted parameter to tell the web service to return empty cells as the empty string. So we use again our session ID specify the sheet name and the range name get back an array of objects at this point here. And then we display the values in the range. So I'll put something to the console here and then we loop through each row and within each row um, the array of objects that makes up the cells for the row and we write out the contents of each cell for each row and then a final terminating line here. And we catch any exceptions, any SOAP exceptions and display them, any generic exceptions and display them. And then finally we come down here and we close the workbook um, make sure we have a session ID and if do, we do, we do a closed workbook specifying the session ID so we can be proactive about releasing our resources on the server. And then finally display a message here to press any key to continue. So at this point here we should be able to build our application and it looks like the build succeeded just fine. Okay, so now that we successfully added the code and built our test application, we can test it and see if it actually is able to work with the Excel web services to pull some data back from a workbook. So I've got 
a workbook up here in a trusted location on my SharePoint site. And if I open it up, we can take a look at what's in it. It just has a simple range of data here with part number, category, and quantity from the table here. The name of the table is inventory. It's located in sheet one, and the name of the workbook is inventory.xlsx. And we're down here in the um, Acona 2007 RTM docs documents location. So if I come back over here to a command prompt, I've got a command line entered in here. I'm located in the folder containing the debug build of the application. So I'm specifying the slash service switch to hit the Excel web service, slash book switch to specify the URL of the workbook that I want to open, the sheet within that workbook I want to work with, and the name of the range within that sheet within that workbook. So if I hit enter, the application goes ahead, uses the Excel web service to request that data, um, and then displays it, and it looks like it worked just fine. It pulled back the range of data that we just looked at in the Excel workbook. So by using Microsoft Visual Studio 2005 and the Excel services web service, it's very easy for us to, with just a few lines of code, use the Excel services web service to pull back a range of data by name from an Excel workbook in a trusted location on our SharePoint site.